several years with Ron Kruger under that staff, and so he's going to try to bring that experience to the game tonight. He's in a rebuilding project. They were 5-25 and 25 a year ago, Omaha, and they finished last in the Summit League, and that league, of course, includes Kansas City. Now the Jayhawks dressed in their home white with the ball first. Grady Dick loses the handle momentarily. Now Wilson drives in. Off the rim, no good. Poked out. And here comes J.J. White. Yeah, J.J. White uh, coming in as a junior college player. You know, there's a lot of uh, a luster and shine that comes from five-star athletes coming out of high school or, or even uh, a, a, a prep school type guy. But, I mean, those Juco guys can still get after it. Looking forward to that matchup tonight. Grady Dick with the first move. And now Kevin McCuller. Kevin McCuller, the transfer from Texas Tech. That's just the experience and defensive savviness that he brings to the table. We saw him really change the tempo of the game earlier in the ex exhibition game against Pitt State. Okay, you started down early. It was his defensive energy that helped get points on the board for the Hawks. Yeah, no question. A little pull-up jumper off the heel, no good. Marshall misses, and Jalen Wilson bringing it down. Where well, the Jayhawks are trying to move fast. Certainly a traditional way that Coach Self likes to play. Ball and body movement. Certainly looks a little bit different than the game we saw earlier with the Jayhawks attacking the basket right away instead of settling for long jump shots. And they dared Harris to shoot it. It's poked out of bounds by K.J. Adams. It'll go to the Mavericks. You know, Juwan Harris has turned into a capable shooter mm -hmm. during his career here. I'm actually thinking that's one of the areas where he's going to have to transition into as being a dependable scorer. You know, I don't even know if Dewan Harris has averaged 10 points, double digits his entire career, even going back to high school. But I think one thing that he's going to have to step up and do is be more assertive on the offensive end and help this Jayhawk score. What's the biggest challenge for him then, physically or mentally, to make that score? I think it's mentally. He's a true point guard in every sense of the word. We'd rather facilitate and distribute the ball first, but they're going to need him to score this season. Here's Fiddler. And he's able to knife his way inside. Frankie Fiddler, the sophomore, he was the leading scorer for this Omaha team a year ago. This is their first game this year with Fiddler coming off the tear. His last several games in the 2021-22 campaign. Jalen Wilson showing his range. Much better start than what we saw against Pittsburgh State the other night. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> and here we're seeing that continued full court presser. Jalen Wilson coming off with a nice DHO. Defender choosing to go under that time, and Jay Will just rose up right over the top, really trying to extend and grow his range during the offseason. And we're seeing that hard work come into play in that shot there. Blocked by McCullough. Trying to get it down to Grady Dick, and it's picked off instead by Marshall. Now Marshall on the wing. Here we see K.J. Adams starting at the five. Really giving the Kansas Jayhawks a new defensive look that can actually switch one through the five when K.J.'s on the court. Testament to his versatility. Wow. That was a late call. Foul on Wilson, and it'll be three shots for Marshall. Yeah, Jay Will trying to do a great job of finishing that play. Just crowding the shooter a little bit too much. You need to give him a little bit of space to land. The shooter offensive player has that cylinder that starts from the ground all the way to the ceiling. That is his space and can't be encroached upon. Marshall, a top 50 junior college player. Grew up in the state of Georgia. You never want to see a three-point shot, shot foul late in a shot clock. I'm still not sure it was a foul, but we'll take the official's word for it. And the three points for Marshall to tie the game. A little pressure now by the Mavericks. Bit of token pressure applied there by the Mavericks. See potential little matchup zone here. Oh. Adams blocked at the rim, but it'll be a foul on Fiddler. 
Man, love the aggressiveness there that we saw Jay Will attack the basket. Mm -hmm. Usually he's more of a layup floater type guy, but attacking the rim, trying to get the and one dunk there. And of course, we know KJ Adams is a handful on the offensive glass, creating the extra possession, dialing in to get some free points here. KJ Adams in his sophomore campaign, he was on the all freshman team for the Big 12 last year. And I can't tell you how impressive it is for a player like that to receive that postseason award. Mm -hmm. His minutes, his minutes were minimal, his productivity seemed minimal, but I tell you what, every time that young man stepped on the court, he impacted the game. Yes, he did. Even in that national championship game against North Carolina. Absolutely. Checked him in at the last seconds, put him on the best player. And the game's on the line. We saw that in the Elite Eight against Isaiah Wong. White trying to get it up over Grady Dick. Long rebound. Well, it came right into the lap of Sutton, and he couldn't flush it home because he was fouled. Markwell Sutton, sophomore from the Mavs, one of the better athletes on the court. Just kind of an unlucky play there. 50-50 ball went up. Could have been anyone's possession. Got knocked around a little bit. Fell into the right spot for the Mavs. Markel Sutton, the sophomore. Coming from Connors State, where he averaged 17 points, nine rebounds. They like his athleticism. And thinks that once he settles into this system, he's really going to be a force for them. Yeah, Coach Crutchfield really excited about his ability to attack the basket. It's a solid shooter, can make the open three, but it's best when he's penetrating to the rim, getting fouled and creating havoc. A bad pass from Jalen Wilson, but a better steal by Harris. Quickly up, Grady Dick, fall away, he'll go to the line. That's a signature DeWan Harris defensive play. He's able to create extra possessions for you just by his length, by his timing, by his grit on the defensive end. Able to impact the game in so many ways without scoring, and that's one of them. And foul there on Dylan Brome. Great debut for Brady Dick against Pittsburgh State. Everybody talking about this kid coming in. Imagine the pressure he feels because, I mean, he, he really had that target on his back, being the McDonald's All-American, top 20 recruit in the country. But boy, he, so far, so good. Absolutely. You know, when you come in with the type of accolades that Grady does, of course, the expectations are there. But those are those are expectations that he's had to operate on his entire career. That was a charge and another great defensive play by Harris. Tawan Harris keeping those feet moving, walling up. That's called KYP, knowing your personnel, knowing that J.J. White in the scouting report is a driver first. Tawan stepping in, sacrificing his body to take that charge. Another three. Yes! Wilson two for two from beyond the arc, and now it's travel starting on the defensive end for the Jayhawks. And I know that's the way Coach Self and his staff would rather have it. So the Jayhawks will inbound it from underneath their basket. That one tipped away. Brady Dick will go back to midcourt to get it. 15 on the shot clock. Wilson. Well, it was just a hair short. So he's two for three from three-point land. Probably a little bit of a heat check there when you make two threes in a row. You get a little bit of a license to be able to shoot that third. Look at Grady Dick poking around. Let's see if he rewards himself. He does to Harris. Good awareness. Great court awareness. Great being able to see the Jayhawks share that basketball in transition to come away with the easy one. No guys hunting their shot. Giving up a good shot for a great shot by giving it up to a teammate. Five turnovers now for Omaha. Yeah, take care of the basketball. Something for Mavericks are certainly going to have to tighten up if they want to keep this game close. But you see, by the way, the Jayhawks are on their feet. Way off for Marshall. What a pass! And 
transition basketball here. It's the pace of the game. It's falling right into the hands of the Jayhawks. You know, the Mavs being smaller in stature, the pace of the game being this fast would usually be to their advantage, but the Jayhawks matching that pace and intensity, turning the basketball over and getting it up the court in transition. That's having their way. That stops an 8-0 run for KU as Brown gets inside. and it'll belong to Omaha. Well, the Mavericks have turned it over four times in just the last two minutes of this game. And a little bit of a miscue there by KJ Adams and, and Jalen Wilson on the screen action. Ernest Uday seven. And I'll tell you what I'm really excited about this young man coming into the basketball game. Not just because he wears number 23. <laughs> it's wearing your number. That's right, but because he's got some great length and athleticism, a lob threat, something that we haven't had in a few years. Dating all the way back to Yudoka Azabuki. Oh, a blocking foul. I thought Grady Dick was set, but I guess not. Ray Natilli, a veteran official, making the call. Yeah, he might have been sliding. Yeah, a little bit of shuffle back in the back pedal there. Maybe if he would have held his ground for another moment or two, might have been able to come away with it. But again, J.J. White trying to get to the rim, driver first. Off the heel for J.J. White. That's one thing that's really difficult in terms of making that transition as a freshman is learning how to play without fouling. Game is a lot more physical, it's a lot faster. Got to keep teams off the free throw line. Giving up those free baskets. The lock. A little foul there. You, you talked about that presence inside. Yeah, and that is his, his best offensive attribute is setting the high ball screen, allowing Dewan Harris to get a paint touch, though he didn't quite get a paint touch that time, but Ernest has that athleticism where he can pretty much go up and catch it anywhere above the square and finish that one there was contested. I'm sure we'll be seeing that a few more times. Uh -huh. Ernest Uday is one of three McDonald's All-Americans recruited by Bill Self and his staff. Of course, the other two are Grady Dick and MJ Rice, who has been hobbled by injuries. We may see him a little bit here tonight. Yeah, an excellent recruiting class. Anytime you can get multiple McDonald's All-American in a recruiting class, obviously there's going to be lots of eyes and attention on their capability, but still a pretty steep learning curve no matter how many stars you have by your name. Bobby Pettiford has checked in for KU. Another turnover for Omaha. Pettiford with it. Kind of lost his dribble and uh, knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with KU. Yeah, he was thinking to give that up a little bit earlier. I didn't like the spacing mm -hmm. that Kevin McCullough had on that. Bobby Pettiford probably would have wanted to keep it a couple more dribbles to allow Kevin to separate himself from the defense, maybe pitch ahead a little bit further. But getting the ball back, no harm, no foul. Pettiford only played 14 games last year, more than he could to red shirt, but it's good to see him back out there and healthy. Yeah, he really did some good things in the exhibition game right there, showing his mid-range being a solid second-level scorer. We've seen flashes of what he could be. Man, everyone's just hopeful that this guy can stay healthy so that we can see him develop into a solid and reliable backup for Dewan Harris. Another freshman that Omaha's very high on, Luke Jungers. Good work on the glass. Luke Jungers, a former, former teammate of Brady Dick right there. And Brady Dick a better end of that. How quick is that release? Ooh. Has such a quick release, has a high release as well. Yeah. Very, very difficult uh, to block. Coming into Kansas, 
considered a, a certified shooter. I think he can develop into a real certified scorer, not just settling for long-range shots, though he is a great shooter, but I think he can actually get to the rim, begin to lift people with a shot fake, draw fouls. I think he could be a great three-level scorer by the time he's done here at Kansas. Joseph Yesifu has checked in. He replaces Kevin McCuller. Joseph Yesifu working his way as himself into some additional minutes. Again, he and Bobby Pettifer looking to make that all difficult jump between your first year here and your second year. Get a little bit more experience, a little bit more comfortable in their role and their system. Ude probably doesn't need to go out that far, but got away with it. Another long three, no. And rebounded away by Jungers. And it's like the body language the Jayhawks are showing right now, flying around. You know, Ernest contested that inbounds pass all the way to half court. Usually not ideal for a guy that size, but just like his hunger and defensive disposition. What an acrobatic move by Grady Dick. Great tip. KJ Adams gets it. Great job by Bobby Pettifer. Attacking the basket, creating for others. Man, this one-shot defense and quick outlets for the Jayhawks really causing havoc for the Mavericks in transition. And of course, their activity on the glass with a nice backdoor cut there. Yeah, Grady Dick went out for the steal and got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. A little bit of a fish and miss. Mm -hmm. Technically been better if Brady would have tried to deny that with his inside hand, might have been able to recover. Guard that back door. What a tough shot for Bobby Pettifer. Jayhawks with their biggest lead of the game at 11. And Grady Dick forces a turnover there. He's everywhere. Grady Dick from Wichita, Kansas. The Big W is on the board. Wilson, to be more physical, to take the ball inside, to post up because Omaha doesn't like the contact. Omaha's big man already with two fouls early in this game, guys. And again, Norm Roberts coaching for Coach Self for the first four games of the season. Let's see if this young Jayhawk team can execute on what Coach Roberts was sharing there in the timeout. Zone defense now by Omaha. Pretty savvy move by Coach Crutch. Changing up defense is coming out of the timeout. Good rebound by Adams. McCuller. No, that's long. Adams trying to save it. And it'll go out of bounds off of KJ. And it'll belong to the Mavericks. It's a big time effort there by KJ Adams. Multiple efforts on the glass. Got one of those back very close to getting a second. It's the type of effort that'll keep you on the court. He's one of those guys, isn't he, that he just knows his role on this team. He doesn't have to score a lot, but gosh, he impacts the game in so many ways. Well, every team needs a guy that's going to hunker down and do the intangibles on both ends of the court and enjoy it. And KJ Adams is, is such a player. Yeah, he embraces that role, doesn't he? Good defense. Right as the shot clock is expiring, ball poked out of bounds. It'll belong to KU. It's actually a great defensive effort by Joseph Yesifu, who got caught on a matchup against Markel Sutton, giving up several inches, but stayed him away and caused him to pass the ball away and even made an extra effort to contest that shot there. Yesifu. Nope. Maybe felt a little entitled on that in the court yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? I'd like to see him when you be that instant offense off the bench. Or no, you know, I like instant offense guys, um, but I think it's great when you can try to impact the game in some other areas before you come in and take the early three. You know, we've got certified scores, Brady, J. Will. Yep. We want to find easy ways to score like that. I guess just 
based on what he did at Drake, where he's, you know, averaged 23 a game in the tournament for them and, and did all that, scored 36 against Evansville, you just think of him as being a little bit more of a scorer than he was a year ago. You know, he certainly has that capability to go off for big games, and, and we're going to need that. But I would say night in and night out. Joe's going to be more disruptive for us on the defensive end, knocking down open shots and being a ball mover. What a great pass by Adams. That's one of those intangibles. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, Dewan Harris did a great job of not settling for standing in one place and becoming a spectator. But movement without the ball so key. And when you see that happen, it turns into easy baskets. By the way, I know we don't know each other as well as we should. But you can disagree with me. If you don't agree with my analysis, it's okay. I, don't, I, will not I will not be offended, and I will defer to your experience. Well, I appreciate that accommodation, but you've seen a lot of basketball over your years, and, and, and your analysis and commentary is, is certainly valid. I don't know about that. You could play. I couldn't. And that's... Luke Jungers, who, by the way, scored 23 in their exhibition win for Omaha against Mid-America as they won that game 96-71. to They beat Mid-America Christian. Oh, guys are moving around in the lane. The free throw counts anyway. Yeah, Gungers and Fiddler, a nice scoring combination mm -hmm. that's going to serve Omaha well in the summit. Trying to find some points here tonight. And they're both 6'7, six, 6'9, six, and good shooters from the outside. Yeah, they are. It's interesting in the makeup of their roster. Probably their biggest players are their better perimeter players and offensive scores. Yes, Afu steps inside the three point line and can't make that. Kind of a forced shot there by Marshall. Yeah, I thought maybe Yes, who backed out of a charge there. Fortunately, they're able to recover. Grady Dick. Boy, you give him just a half second. You know, this three-point shooting can really become lethal because we haven't seen a lot of specific plays run for Grady. Not a lot of pin downs, not a lot of specific action to get him the basketball, but if they find him in transition and he can catch and shoot, wow. he'll be a menace. KJ Adams stood his ground. Good steal there and sharing the basketball. And anytime you can attack a defense in a broken floor situation where guys aren't in the right spots, it turns into easy transition baskets, which is giving the Jayhawks the upper hand early in this first half. A nice little dipsy do by Harris, wasn't it? Checking in for the first time is Zach Clements. And he grabs a rebound right away. Oh, Wait, Jalen Wilson. Is off to a great start in this game with eight points, four rebounds, and four assists. Zach Clements, another one of those freshmen looking to make a big jump to a sophomore year. And I really feel like Jalen Wilson's offensive productivity is coming out of his assertiveness to attack the rim first and then find open long shots as the game progresses. As the Jayhawks make a transition from going small to big and roles change, how do the players adjust to that? Well, I think it's one of the advantages uh, that the Jayhawks have here when you get a chance to have a guy like K.J. Adams at the five. You can play small, switch five. You've got Ernest Uday coming in, and he's a lob threat. And Zach Clements, we all know he's got great ability to stretch the floor with his own range. Marshall with a three from the outside. Marshall with a rebound off the Harris miss. J.J. White. I don't know if Zach got a piece of that or not, but it was off target. You know, things may change offensively in terms of looks and priority depending on the lineup, but the need to play defense and to play turnovers and have it, that's something that any lineup that you're going to see from the Jayhawks has to do. And one. Clements with the foul. Sutton will go to the line. Markel Sutton getting to that right hand to 
Easy slot drive. Zach Clements tried to challenge it at the basket. It's a little bit too late. No, Coach Kretz wants to see a guy like Markel Sutton attack the basket more, use that athleticism that he has to try to create more offensively. So they've been laboring shooting from, from behind the arc. Maverick showing zone here. Jalen Wilson with his third three of the game. And really dialed in on that one. That was a highly contested three right at the apex of it. But was able to lock in on the concentration, get off a good release, and knock it down. Jay Will feeling it from three. If he hits threes, because he's such a great driver of the ball, that's really going to help him. Grady Dick, a little bit short on that one. Poked around by KJ, but out of bounds. Well, we saw it there, and they didn't quite finish on that possession. But one of my favorite attributes about Jalen Wilson is that when he gets the defensive rebound, he has the ball handling ability to be able to push it in transition himself, go coast to coast, which puts pressure on the defense and allows him to spray it and find it for the open shooter. He lost his handle right there about half court. But had he had kept that, I think something good would have happened for the Jayhawks that possession. Three-pointer in and out, no good. Sutton with the rebound. Jay Will missing an easy opportunity for a hit to hit block out there. Got an the arm battle above the waist. Allowing that offensive rebound to get back to him. Brady Dick was in the right place at the right time. And there's our guy, KJ Adams again. Another three? No. Adams tried to save it. Good effort. Marshall. And here comes KU right back on the fly. Interesting to have Harrison Pettiford in the lineup at the same time. Yeah, it certainly is. And I think we'll see uh, a lot of that uh, two-point guards being played, whether it's Harris or Pettiford, or we saw a little bit earlier, Pettiford and Yosef Yesifu. Mm -hmm. Keeping up the pace and the rhythm, the playmaker ability. Good cut to the basket by Jalen Wilson. Timeout, 3.24 left to go in the first half. And Kansas cruising, leading by 13. Going bowling. They're going Rally bowling. Right, right, Not that go. kind of bowling. Come on. We're going bowling around Christmas time. Oh, yeah. And how good was Devin Neal the other day? Oh, 224 man. yards rushing, another 110 receiving. Wow. It's so great seeing a local Lawrence kid have a breakout game like that because you know it means so much to him growing up, watching the Jayhawks, dreaming about being a Jayhawks and having an all-time performance to help break that bowl drought. But plenty of work left to do in this football season. I know Coach Leipold and his staff and those players aren't satisfied with merely having six wins. They've got an opportunity to get, get a couple more. Absolutely. What a difference he has made in this program. The culture that they have now for Jayhawk football. And you know, the thing I like is he's such a great guy, such a great coach. But it's not like they're winning because the other team is turning it over 12 times and they're getting lucky to win. They're good and they're fast and they run downhill. No, it's true. That game on Saturday was as commanding of a victory as a coach Leipold led Jayhawk team has, has had. And, well, back to basketball. How about Bobby Pettiford? Oh, Bobby Pettiford's having a great game and being assertive and, and attacking the rim and showing some athleticism. And these guys, there's KJ Adams again, keeping that Jeez. ball alive on the offensive glass. And you know, Bobby Pettiford had an opportunity to settle for a long jump shot there, but being aggressive and assertive, get to the layup, coming up short on the and one finish, but. 
Gosh, if he can, if he can do that, that, that freshman and sophomore jump is going to be something that he'll handle nicely. For himself, I like this stat. KJ Adams has six offensive rebounds this first half. Unbelievable. a load to keep off the offensive glass with his size and athleticism his activity he has a great second jump keeping those basketballs alive and again Omaha lacking some size when it comes to the interior and really having a difficult time finishing defensive possession Brady Dick is on the court at all times. I mean, at all times. Nice move inside by J.J. White. It was a tough contested two that J.J. White made over K.J. Adams. Showing some great footwork, staying in front of the ball handlers. J.J. White wasn't going to be denied on that, that pull-up. Jay Will trying another three, and guess who with another offensive rebound? Brady Dick with another three, no, not this time. Man, it's going to come to a point where in order to keep K.J. Adams off the glass, you might, you might have to face block him. You might have to turn your back all the way to the basket, put two arms in his chest just to try to keep him from getting the offensive rebound. Juwan Harris showing his love for this end of the court. I love watching him on this end of the court. I love watching him. Look at those hands. You know, it takes a special player to be energized on the defensive side of the court. And it's really contagious. And he's turned up like that. Look at that. He sees Grady Dick following. Jalen Wilson with an offensive rebound, and he'll go to the line. Better for Shark in the ball handler, Grady Dick doing a great job on the dribble drive. Bobby Pettifer sneaking over there, getting that steal, causing fast break opportunity for the Jayhawks. Couldn't convert. Jalen Wilson, 14 first half points now to go along with eight rebounds. It's a nice little start to the night, I should say, to the season. Pretty impressive seeing several Jayhawks active in multiple categories on the stat sheet. Scoring points in enough. Seeing guys being two-way players. Rebounds, steals, assists. Good shot by Luke Jungers. That's a buzzer. That's the first half. Jalen Wilson with 15 first half points. Grady Dick. The oversized Kansas Jayhawks, guys. Thanks a lot, Kenitra. It was interesting today at practice. We were asking Coach Crutch, all right, did you ever think about being a football coach? And he said, I was actually a graduate assistant for one year. And when I realized how much those guys have to work and how much film they have to watch, and it was 14 hour days every day, I thought, I'm going to go back to basketball. Yeah, well, I know that uh, Coach Crutch has put in an equal amount of time uh, at this position uh, from a basketball standpoint. And he's no. He's no stranger to hard work and coach behind the likes of Lon Kruger and Dana Altman. He's been at it for a while and, and he'll get this Omaha team where they need to go in the Summit League. Harris with the lane open. Kind of lost the handle going up left handed, but there was KJ Adams again. You know, KJ is also developing a real nose for the ball. It's not just about how high and quick he can jump, it's also about anticipating where the ball is going to be and being in the right spot before it's even there. That's a great play by Grady Dick. Great job there with the, the active hands and then the extra effort. Creating the extra possession for the Jayhawks. Get a chance to see the Jayhawks in a little bit of a half court traditional floor kind of setting. KJ Adams probably 
force the issue there a little bit, but man, when you're as active on the glass and stolen as many possessions back as him, and you gotta feed the big fella, man. Let him yeah. eat every now and then, right? That's right. <laughs> From one big fella to another, I get it, yeah. Probably they're gonna work that hard, you gotta get him. Probably want to get his bag a little bit, show what he can do offensively. Didn't quite see it there. Fiddler looking inside for Brome. He's covered up. Fiddler with a little fadeaway no. But Brome is there and then foul. Fiddler having a relatively quiet night for his scoring ability. He'll still be a player to watch to be able to score in bunches as of late. Grady Dick and Jalen Wilson just missing a block out there. And Grady Dick whistled for the foul. Dylan Brom, the junior. Jayhawks coming down the stretch. You're going to have to focus in on doing the small things well, like blocking out, not just relying on their size and athleticism to go up to get the basketball because it won't be long before they'll be facing other teams that can outmatch them in that category. Harris was a little body control, but J.J. White was there defensively. Marshall. That's a tough shot off that catch. It is, and there's another three-point shot there that, again, is going to allow them to hang around. McCullough with a spin move. He'll go to the line. And then he's wrong with a foul, and that's his third. First team. Nice downhill drive there. You know, sometimes the tendency when you give up a three on the defensive end is to settle for a quick and early three on the offensive end. It's nice to see the Texas Tech transfer attack the basket, get a foul for some easy points. And I'm, and I'm really excited about him. I'm too. I think that he can be probably an easier plug and play type transfer than maybe Remy Martin was. The culture and the mindset of Texas Tech mm -hmm. being more on the defensive end, I think, suits this Bill Self style coach team. He's been in big games at the biggest level. I think there's some big things you can expect of Kevin McCullough for this Jayhawk team down the stretch. Coach Self doesn't press much. He hasn't through his career, but this is a team that could press. You know, they could. And we saw it while they were down early against Pitt State. Traditionally hasn't liked to do that. Likes to disrupt the ball handler. Don't quite have a rim protector like we've had in the past if the ball gets over the top of the press. But, man, with guys like Dewan Harris who came up a little hobbled on that play there, and Bobby Pettifer and Joseph Yesafu and guys that can just fly around and, and cause havoc and frenzy, you know, press can be helpful at times. I don't I don't get the sense of that something that we're going to see right. regularly. No. no, but it's certainly a tool that can be utilized in different facets. It's not going to be like old Billy Tubb Sooners. Yeah, it's yeah, not going to be that. that. I don't think no, it's no, going to no. be a press Virginia type style. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ten-point lead for KU. Their biggest lead, 16 in the game. Keep an eye on Fiddler getting warmed up here. Mm -hmm. One of the easiest ways for a scorer to get going is to make two easy free throws to see that ball go in. Transition three for Luke Junger. And a timeout for Norm Roberts. And that's a great find there. Coming on the broken floor in transition. Utah on the 18th and then North Carolina State on the 23rd. Yeah, I know a lot of people's eyes trim towards that. Still a lot of work to do tonight. Yeah, yeah. The game is still within reach. You know, I think that three-pointer that Gungers made to end 
the first half was more meaningful than maybe what it saw. Kind of fused a little bit more confidence in the Mavericks coming out from the three-point line, and, and we're seeing that with the type of start that they've had here in the second half. McCuller loses the handle, but then popped up by Markel Sutton, and it'll go right back to KU. So interesting, we saw the, the one-shot defense and the hard denies in the passing lane create easy baskets for the Jayhawks in the, in the first half. Here we're seeing the Mavericks try to apply that very same thing here in the second half. And, you know, Coach Brushfield was talking about the shoot around that he's really wanting to see his Mavericks grow on the defensive side of the ball in the Summit League that's usually geared around scoring points. They with a foul there. Another turnover for KU. You notice Omaha has tightened up their defense as well. They're playing KU a little tighter than they were in the first half. It's interesting watching them in warm-ups and hearing Coach Crutchfield's commentary on what they want to do defensively, and I saw them actually practicing hard closeouts during the warm-ups. Mm -hmm. You know, typically teams are in dunk contests and shooting threes, man. These guys are working on their defensive footwork and their defensive effort, and, man, we're starting to see that pick up here for them, and it's proven to be helpful. You know, like Coach Leipold did for football at KU, I think Coach Crutchfield is trying to do the same at Omaha to change the culture there. Well, I'm sure he'd like to do that, and it's probably more meaningful for him with that being his alma mater. We got a timeout with seven seconds of the shot clock and a timeout on the court. Tired. Uh, looked like that went right off the shoe of Marshall. Yeah, we've got the luxury of the replay monitor over here. Yeah. Probably tough to see in real time live action. Well, it is tough for an official to see all of that. There you see some tough defense there the Jayhawks. And a shot clock has expired on the Mavericks. You know, Ernest gets the cherry on top there with the big time block. I thought Kevin McCullough did a great job. Look at that wall up there forcing, forcing the Mavs to take a, a difficult off balance shot. And the big fella came in and cleaned it up. Wilson. Jalen Wilson showing that nice second level scoring of that curl shoot mid range shot. His first points of the second half. His 17 of the game. JJ White. Brady Dick. Traffic on display showing that hey, I'm more than a shooter. I can show a little bit of athleticism finishing at the rim. Some breathing room again for KU. McCuller got a hand on that one. Here he comes. Turnovers turns into and I never get tired of saying that. And hey, that's okay. We get to say that for a whole year. Defending national champion. Love it. Love it. So important to see here. Moving forward, just early look in the season. Man, how defense can create points and. Man, we just see it energizing, guys. And another turnover for the Mavericks. And look at that. You see the energy. You feel it in the building. You see it in their body language on the defensive end. I used the word earlier in the cast. It's a frenzy. Yeah. And Kevin McCullum, better than most, loves to initiate that with his savvy veteran mentality and Man, his desire to be disruptive on the defensive end. He's a game changer. Oh, what a great vision by McCullough. He's taken over the last three minutes of this game. You know, he really has, and, you know, that's a skill.
skill that Ernest is, is just now learning to develop, not only getting the proper angle on the ball screen, but sprinting out of it as fast as you can, causing confusion, causing rotational help and lobbing it up to where he can Just a shooter, right? <laughs> I can't play. hear myself think right now. The five-star recruit making a five-star play behind the three-point arc above the rim, man. He's doing it all. McCullough again. Give me that ball. Brought the house down. Man, what a what a level of excitement that these Kansas fans are experiencing. It's no wonder that the home opener streak is what it is. As you're giving them plays like this, and well, let's go look at some stuff. Look at some stuff here, folks. This is fun. Juan, even with his dribble used, still in command, composed, control. And Kevin McCullough doing a great job finding the big fella above the rim. And man, I think even a play like that might have surprised some people. I thought he might have was gonna go lay that up and he went went Tom Chambers on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. Well, Robinson has hit the line. Valley, a lot of you from right here know Lamel Robinson. He went to Park Hill South. Wow, what what a frenzy that was! That that was like sharks in the water. Well, it's certainly a game of runs, and Omaha may have theirs here before too long. And Norm Roberts subbing in Bobby Pettis to get him in to keep the pace up. And oh, fade away from Jay Will. He's got a double-double tonight. 19 points, 10 rebounds. So glad that in Jaden Wilson's evolution as a player, he did lose his priority to rebound. He led the team in rebounding last year, and I think early in the season, he, he struggled a little bit as he was maybe forcing the issue offensively. But he's continuing to keep that that mindset of being a well-rounded player rebounding as well All right, thanks a lot by the way in case you're wondering all right if Kansas wins tonight who gets the win is it Norm Roberts or is it Bill Self? The answer is neither the win goes to the program and neither coach will be rewarded with a win or a loss over the next four games Well, ultimately that's probably the, the most important thing that I think both those coaches would agree on that it's a program win and adding another one to the winningest program in Division One basketball history. Yes, sir. This is Tony Osborne being bird dogged by Pettiford. Say Osborne can really shoot the three. They're not letting him get loose. Chrome. They find Marshall with six to shoot it. And a fall away shot by Jaden Marshall. And that's one thing that Jaden Marshall is great at doing is attacking a long closeout. Even though the effort was there by Kansas, trying to fly around and keep up with that ball rotation. Brady Dick found himself in difficult one on one matchup. Caller got a hand on that one. And steals it, but oh, they're going to whistle for a foul here. Three fouls on McCuller. A little bit of too much contact in there with looks like the off arm might have been been holding Marshall off. Tough shot by Osborne. Sweeping hook high off the glass. Don't see that much anymore. No, you're really sky not. hook. 
which is so interesting because it is the shot responsible for the most points in NBA history. The sky hook is all but dead nowadays. Yeah. Well, most points because of mostly one guy. Definitely Kareem. one guy. <laughs> With LeBron James creeping in on that number. Mm -hmm. Night in and night out in the NBA. Color. And that'll be a blocking foul. He'll go to the line. Oh, I love his energy. Can't know when he needs to attack the basket. Creating easy points from the free throw line. He's a capable shooter as well. Not a knockdown, not a sniper by any stretch of the imagination, but knows how to get to his spots. Knows how to create foul situations to get to the free throw line. That's a big backcourt for KU when you consider. I think Juwan Harris, even though they list him at 6'1, I think he plays bigger than that because of his wingspan. Well, his presence yes. uh, is certainly always felt. He's got the ability with his feet and his quickness to get up under a ball handler for the full length of the court. His wingspan is such that he can always a threat to deflect the pass or, or poke the steal. And that creates such an advantage on the defensive end. And the Osborne looks like he's trying for a role of some instant offense. Man, he's having some great energy off the bench, scoring yep. several points in a row. And didn't play in the first half even. Patterford. He's got double figures now for the first time in his KU career. Ten points, his previous career high, five against Michigan State. Remember, though, he only played 14 games a year ago. I feel like all of his points have come from inside the paint. Shown his ability to slash to the basket, finishing traffic. Pettiford trying to walk, walk that tight line on the sideline, but he stepped out of bounds. Bobby showing some great ability to catch and drive immediately. Some guys hesitate, some guys want to catch and pull up. Bobby with a hard left-hand dribble towards the basket, getting downhill with a great finish to two points. Youngers had to put it up. Is that a foul? Oh my goodness. With nothing on the shot clock, a foul on KJ Adams. Wow, 29.99 seconds of great defensive discipline. KJ got lifted just a little bit, man. I yeah, think even if he would have stayed down on his feet, that would have been a yep. very difficult shot for Jungers to make. It's actually the second late shot clock foul behind the three-point line that the Jayhawks have had tonight. It might, it might not be painful or lethal in a game like this, but it's something that you're certainly going to have to clean up when you're getting into more closer situations. Yeah, definitely a foul, no question. I mean, and a good move by Jungers with a ball fake. And that's where KJ's just got to learn to stay on his feet. Yeah, he knows it. He's feeling it. Yep. James Jungers was a really good player at Creighton Prep in Omaha, so a local kid stays home. in this game in double figures he now has a dozen Jungle is assuming the role that Frankie Fiddler normally has mm -hmm. back to his zone the alley-oop a little bit short There it is. There it is. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time when you have KJ Adams in that stationary position going from elbow to elbow. It's very difficult in the goal zone because the guy in the middle has to step up and guard the most important thing on the court, which is the basketball. And you leave the guys on the back side of the zone out to dry when you have 
an athlete behind there like Ernest, able to catch it from anywhere around the square and finish it. What rain! It can't be a fresh. That was nearly from the feathers, the tail feathers on the Jayhawk. Brady Dick showing the type of range. NBA range where I'm sure he hopes and is showing the potential to be able to play at that level here very soon. And with a rebound, here comes Harris. Oh, he was looking inside. Brady Dick, by the way, with 19 points, four of six from beyond the arc. And now let's just flush it right away. So impressive. I don't know who you saw it early in that possession. DeWan Harris, like a quarterback, directing guys where to go in the half court offense, telling Grady what he was going to do, and then putting that basketball right where it needed to be for Grady for the catch and flush. I'll tell you what, a play like that not only shows Grady's athletic ability but Juan's ability to take command of this team and it's really looking like his team. And the Jayhawks are pulling away. Ten straight points by KU. Bobby Pettifer coming off his career high. All of his points up until that point had come in the paint showing he has the ability to make the knockdown three. One for two from out there. Man, great contest by Dewan Harris as Jade Marshall was trying to work himself into a dribble rhythm to score that. Harris said, you can't leave me that open. And the floodgates have opened. Adams probably didn't have the ideal alley-oop angle on the same side of the court. The Jayhawks stayed disciplined, drew two defenders up there to the elbow, and was able to throw over the top to the big fella. 26-point lead for KU. Three-point effort from the wing is no good by Fiddler. Fiddler put that up on the roof. Great dribble penetration by J.J. White. Found Fiddler. That's the shots that the Mavericks want to get. Fiddler unable to convert on that possession. There's that ability to finish. There's that assertiveness on the offensive end that the Hawks are going to need Juan to really adopt moving forward to this. I think he actually wanted to throw the out view to, to Ernest Uday a little bit in that possession, but was able to hang up tight and keep the finish off high off the glass. Midler, nice move to get two. By the way, Dewan Harris almost with a double-double here tonight with 11 points, eight assists. And the command that he has over this offense, over every possession, is something that cannot go undervalued. He might not blow up the stat columns, but man, his ability to lead this Jayhawk team with his composure and his basketball IQ is something that could take them a long way. The ball was tipped out of bounds and it will stay with the Jayhawks in 20 seconds on the shot clock. AJ Adams and Bobby Pettiford go out. Here comes Jay. Here comes uh, Wilson back in, and also McCuller. Dick. Man, he's making it look easy. 23 points for Grady Dick on nine of 13 shooting from the field, four of six from that three-point line. Excellent execution on the baseline, out of bounds play. Grady Dick coming off the uh, the pin down screen, catching. Clanton is inside, pivot foot, and hitting down the jumper from the elbow. Let's see what the Jayhawks can do here in traditional half court offense. Looking for Uday down low, and he didn't quite get himself set. It'll be Omaha basketball. We got a timeout under four. Jayhawks cruising in game number one. It's in here where Omaha made little mini runs and got it close, and then all of a sudden 
the floodgates opened again for KU and they went on these 10-0, 12-0 runs. Yeah, well, it is a game of runs and, and Omaha has done a great job of, uh, of trying to stay in the fight. I mean, they're competitors, they want to win. Coach Crutchfield, coach team is not going to lay down. That's a part of the grit and the toughness that he's infusing into these guys. And it's still early. This is their first game. His first game as head coach. Zuby, edge of four. Getting into the game and losing his footing. Yeah, I'm not sure if he got his foot stepped on there. That's why he fell down and, and lost the defensive position there. Good seal inside by McCullough. And a perfect pass by Wilson. It's a perfect pass. Usually when you see that high-low pass from the Kansas Jayhawks, the target is the corner of the backboard. So the passer knows where to throw it. The receiver knows where to expect it. And then once they receive it, should be easy layup from there. Jay Will has really stuffed the stat sheet. A lot of it coming in that first half. But he has 19 points, 11 rebounds, and 7 assists in the game. And it's been a night of career high. Several Jayhawks experiencing that. Several ends of the court. Rebounds, steals, assists. So, yes, being pretty pesky there on Fiddler. And that's solid defense right there. Yeah. And made the big fella give it up, but a three by J.J. White. And an illegal screen set by Ejiofor. Zach Cummings will check in. Also Kyle Cuff, who redshirted last year. Zuby showing his youth a little bit there, not getting set on the screen. And it's something that actually the Jayhawks struggled with early in that Pitt State game. Technically, you want to try to get and set a screen on the lower third of the defender, forcing him to go over. Zuby got caught a little bit too high with a little bit too much movement and contact. Causing that inadvertent foul away from the basket. Interesting here, Dub. They're playing Clements and Edgefor together. Lineup we haven't seen quite yet this year, but it's important for these young guys to get minutes any way they can. These are valuable minutes for them. Clements has got it. Travel by McCuller. Looks like Kevin stopped the movement of that basketball just a little bit too much. Probably thought it was going to be a charge. Turnover easy either way. Not the way you want to have the last possession of the night be, but man, he's done more than enough to contribute to the Jayhawks win. I, I thought he's been solid all around. Absolutely. Edge of four said that rebound's mine. Here comes Cuff. We're talking about St. John's. Of course, Kyle's dad, Kyle Sr., played at St. John's. Great player at St. John's. Got a chance to compete with him or against him in high school and in college. Yeah. Kyle Cuff Jr. right there showing that that New York Harlem toughness. Yeah. With the young small guard fighting for the offensive rebound. And Harlem, New York. We saw some of his athleticism and explosiveness in the preseason game. And there you see a little bit of it there. And he's a fun player to watch in transition and open court and open space. Possesses a nice burst with the basketball on his hand, but also can get vertically as well. Michael Jankovic has checked in to walk on. Senior now. Clements with the rebound. Jankovic. Jankovic quickly becoming a fan favorite. Oh, yeah. You know, you talk about losing Ocha Agbaji and Christian Brown and Mitch Lightfoot. <laughs> hey, not a lot of people were talking about the loss that is Chris Tehan, 
fan favorite coming off oh, the yeah. bench with the quick trigger. So Jankovic has to assume that role, I think right? Jankovic can assume that role nicely. He's got a great three-point shot. His dad was one of the best shooters for K-State. Gotta love the hustle. Michael Jankovic's dad was on staff while I was here. Yeah. You talked about him being a great shooter there. I never beat him in a free throw contest here. I don't like that. <laughs> Tough for me to admit that. I'm sure he's listening or watching. Yeah, but I think if you took him out to that short corner, you, you would <laughs> dominate it. <laughs> the shot clock turned off. Kansas could just drill out the game and go to 1-0 and on the year. The defending national champions start the year with an 89-64 victory. Norm Roberts leads the Jayhawks to their 50th straight 